thank you for joining us here at the club at Ibis. Um, I'm actually here to kind of display our new alcove lounge. It opened up in January. We had a few months before COVID um, where we were you know, able to have the members here to enjoy it. And I think you'll notice it's an absolutely beautiful place. Um, when I volunteered for this event, I did not expect to be uh, here with a mask on with you all. So I'm lucky you being at home without one. If you have any problems hearing us, um, I'm hoping somebody in the background here will give us a sign. Um, we're doing our best at this point to stay safe, better safe than sorry. And, um, but I just wanted to kind of walk you through here. Um, this is the Alco, opened in January. Um, it was actually part of the first phase of our $15 million renovation that we started back in August. Um, and hopefully will be completed by this December. Um, I didn't introduce myself again. I'm Carla Bass, the membership director at the club at Ibis. Um, I've been here for four years and um, Ibis has always played a very, very special part in my heart. I've known it since 1991 when it broke ground. Um, and uh, if you ever need anything real estate wise, tour wise, if I'm not available, this is my right hand. I'm Michael Tobin. It's nice to see everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here in the alcove here at the club at Ibis. Uh, I've been here since 2008 and it's been amazing seeing all of the changes over the years. Our capital improvement project five years ago and Carla we were going to talk about the alcove and the current renovations we have going on as well. We do. Um, real quickly the famous Nula and our food and beverage director Cody we'll get to them in a few minutes but going back to our uh, 15 million dollar renovation this is kind of our third part here. Back in 2014-15, we went through a $37 million renovation. Um, two years ago, we did another $5 million that we did not assess the members for on our legend course. And this $15 million project, we are not assessing the members for. And it was broken down in three separate phases. Um, so with three permits, I should say. So one permit didn't hold up another. This, what we're sitting in right now, is actually part of the first phase. We have um, our renovated card rooms. We now have 400 people can basically sit and play cards at one time. Uh, we did our full renovation in our lobby and our atrium, a facelift in there. Um, this alcove was actually an extension um, of the atrium and uh, turned it into this great lounge. And Chef may tell you a little bit more about that later on, but it basically is going to be tapas and changes on a weekly basis. Um, the second phase, we did a porta cachere over um, at our core. We added a new club fitting studio, dedicating the old one to our Martin Hall on the premises here. And now the third phase is basically extending our hub uh, of about almost 50%, adding an outside bar, a dedicated kitchen, uh, expanding the golf pro shops below, and, um, and our admin offices as well. Did I forget anything, Michael? That covers pretty much everything. It's expected to um, be completed by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. And as Carla said, if any of you need any information about the club, um, membership, anything like that, we're happy to help anywhere we can. And we look forward to seeing everybody again soon, too, as well. Very good. Yeah. So I'll let these two tell you about themselves real quick, and then we'll zoom back out, and Chef will join us. Hi, I'm Nuda. I come from Ireland. I've been at Ibis for 20 years. And it's been the best 20 years of my life. I, I enjoy every moment of it. And the members are fantastic. And my fellow colleagues. Hi, I'm Cody. Uh, I've been here about five years. Started here as a bartender five years ago. Ibis has taken great care of me. I couldn't ask for a better place to work at. Great environment, great membership. I love, love what I do. All right, so here we have Chef Jerome, our famous executive chef. And uh, he's gonna tell you what he's been doing during all of this time, so the last two and a half months of COVID, and uh, how he's been feeding the employees, feeding the members, the different aspects from there. So go ahead, Chef. Thank you, Carla. Good evening, everyone. Uh, obviously, it's uh, not normal time, and it's been a uh, challenge to uh, try to run through that, uh, but basically we try to keep the member at the club as much as possible. Uh, for that, we have done uh, a little Abyss market where you can get all your essentials that uh, the 
you just get it three days a week you just just order and then uh, come to pick up uh, we also do a weekly uh, dinner to go menu that has been extremely well received um, it's a menu of 10 items that change every week and uh, it's a pick up you order from during the day pick up uh, from five o'clock on and we do an average of about 250 dinners a night. Uh, we have reopened the clubhouse and uh, with a 50% occupancy and also social distancing. And we open four nights a week. Uh, and every night we have also a theme night. We do on Wednesday primary. We do on Thursday an Italian theme dinner. On Friday, we do uh, the lobster night. And Saturday, we do steak night. Uh, and we've been averaging about over 100, 120 uh, dinners a night, which is basically at capacity at 50%. Uh, and that also been well attended and well received. The other thing we do, we do our Sunday brunch, a la carte Sunday brunch, reservation only, and Sunday brunch to go. Uh, that has been very, very well attended. And on Sunday evening, we do a drive through barbecue. Um, and that's right under the pork kosher. We and uh, uh, all the the ribs and the smoked chicken and the brisket and and all the traditional uh, the traditional barbecue items. So uh, overall, we have been keeping keeping busy, and um, hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to open the Alpha Four very soon. Well, we're going to start with our first demonstration which is going to be the pineapple infused vodka. Pineapple, pineapple infusion, right? All right. So Nula, what is the pineapple infusion? Pineapple infused with vodka. How long is it infused for, Nula? Uh, 10, uh, 14, 14, 10, yeah, 10, 10, to, 10 to 14 days. 10 to 14 days, okay, minimum. It has to be done in 10 days. This yes. isn't really something you can rush, right? No. Okay, so what you do, Start with the pineapple, right. right? Okay, the standard ratio for the pineapple infusion is one pineapple for one bottle of vodka. Okay, so what you do, you cut up a pineapple like you were about to eat it. And okay? once you've cut it up, you should have something somewhat similar to this. Okay, you want to put it in a container that has a nice lid on it. The reason why, if you leave it open, it's going to ruin the pineapple, it's going to air it out, and it's just going to have kind of a flat taste to it. Okay, once you've got it in your nice container, you have the vodka. Right? How much vodka did we send you? One bottle. One vodka. bottle for every pineapple. Okay. If you want it a little bit sweeter, maybe use half a bottle of vodka. If you want it a little bit stronger, two bottles of vodka. But here at Ibis, maybe we found maybe two and a half. Maybe two and a half. Maybe two and a half. Okay. But here, here at Ibis, we kind of three in my world. Exactly. Just <laughs> here at Ibis, we kind of figured out the perfect ratio: one bottle of vodka to one, one bottle. bottle. So once you've got this, you're gonna add your vodka. Okay. It has one too many. Beautiful. Okay. You kind of want all the pineapple to be submerged in the vodka. We kind of set it up for two bottles of vodka, but this is what it is. So thank you, Nula. Once you've got the lid on there, you're going to put it in the refrigerator. If you don't put it in the refrigerator, the pineapple is going to spoil and it's going to ruin the whole thing. You're going to ruin that nice tasty vodka, right? Okay. So after you've had it in the fridge for how long? Uh, 10 days. 10 days to two weeks, right? After you find it in the fridge, you're going to have a product. Right? You have something that looks a little bit like this, okay? You notice the pineapple's not in there. So what we do, we take the pieces of pineapple out by hand with gloves on, of course, and we squeeze it by hand. The reason we're not going to squeeze it too much is because the vodka's already taken the pineapple flavor out of it. So really the pineapple is a little bit bitter at this point. So if you squeeze it by hand, that's kind of the perfect balance. Doesn't make it too sweet, not too bitter, okay? Once you got it like that, what else do we need to do? Mm -hmm. Just add ice. Add mm -hmm. ice. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. Some ice. Okay. Okay. Very slowly but surely, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. It's Carla. Mm -hmm. A little bit of pineapple in there. Strike it across. Oh, how pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I love that. Over there. We'll put it on this side. 
Is that the mic? Mm -hmm. We're going to actually drop Hannah here in here on you because we have a guest. All right, enjoy. Enjoy. Can't have my mask on. Just with my vodka. This looks so pretty, doesn't it? I don't know about you guys. I've never had this before. I've heard all about it. Mine's better because Lula made it. So thank you. Yes. Thank Perfect. you both. Delicious. This is mine. So I do want to basically bring up after that great demonstration. This girl sitting next to me, along with another girl that we have here, uh, Carly, who's not with us, came up with a phenomenal idea of a food truck here at IBIS last year and probably could not have been at a better time um, because it has just been such a great attribute to IBIS during this COVID time. And I kind of want to give her a chance. Is everybody able to see this? I can kind of walk up and good, good. It's called Fork in the Road. So I'm going to let her talk about this. This is her project and <laughs> go from there. Um, my name's Hannah, so I'm one of the food and beverage managers here. A uh, little background, but very quickly, like Carla said, this came up as an idea myself and one of my fellow managers uh, last year. Uh, we were actually in a management training program, so we had it as our final project. We came up with the idea and pitched it to the managers. Um, we didn't expect to end up pitching it to the board, uh, and they approved the idea, and over through the course of the last year, we're in the process of customizing and purchasing our own food truck. We ended up receiving the truck completely in early January of this year. We had pretty much just started to phase it into some member events, um, thinking of ways we were going to use it for all kinds of private events, outside events, and different things when um, COVID kind of came about. So in the beginning, since the beginning, we've been using it as a food truck um, during lunch. We park it over at the staging area on the golf course, our tournament staging area. So it's stationary there from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., seven days a week. Members can come up, contact us um, with complete social distancing, place and pick up their orders. Uh, it's a limited menu. It's all cooked fresh to order. We have both hot and cold items on the lunch truck. So that is another option for people who are um, in wanting to enjoy lunch and also not quite comfortable to come to the inside facilities yet uh, or also on the golf course is a big it's very popular for that because they're out there also oh, wait till you hear about this <laughs> this is the best part so for the members at night time um we were trying to think of ways to utilize it and do an entire dinner menu remotely on a truck can be a little bit difficult uh, so we came up with the idea as another food and beverage offering to our members during this time. Uh, we turned it into a nighttime cocktail, um, alcohol, and ice cream truck. So the truck, six nights a week, <laughs> or five nights a week, uh, it drives through a designated route to our member homes um, in our communities. It makes stops that we designate and send out to them on a map where they know it will be for periods of time throughout the night. And they can come, they can drive, they can walk, or they can golf cart up to the truck. Again, with social distancing, contact with, they can place their orders for all types of cocktails that we have. This is the adult <laughs> ice cream truck. I mean, where can you go wrong getting ice cream and frozen margaritas when it's right. coming through your neighborhood? And Cody and his team, they do signature drinks on the truck. They'll change up what their special drinks are. Um, they do all kinds of fun, like Carlos said, with the weather frozen drinks. Um, we have the ice creams. We have all types of things. Uh, and then on Sundays right now, we have a drive through barbecue where members can, they drive up in their cars, they place an order where we're fresh cooking all of their grilled barbecue items outside. And we have the truck parked out there as well for them to utilize uh, as a beverage bar, pretty much, it's a portable bar. So we have a much larger variety of frozen drinks and cocktails, barbecue style, you know, you get your vodka lemonades and your daiquiris and all types of good stuff to go with your barbecue food on Sundays. Yep, and then starting next week. Yep, starting like next Wednesday, week. Saturday, I think it is. Mm -hmm. From 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. You'll have it parked right outside of the club. Um, and they are going to do a fork in the road afternoon evening cocktails. Uh, so they will have a cocktails menu, beer, wine, um, frozen, non-frozen cocktails, 
as well as a light food menu, which will be available for price points between three and six dollars, the same time of their operating hours. Didn't Hannah and Carly come up with <laughs> such a wonderful idea for our members? So, hey, are you going to join me for a drink? We got another one coming up right here. Oh, I would love that. What are we having, guys? A smoked old fashioned. Can you want to finish that? No, I'm going to leave it right here. <laughs> Save it for later. It's a real happy one, all right? Okay. <laughs> so, Nula, what goes in a traditional old fashioned? Uh, cherry, uh, orange, and uh, cane sugar. Cane sugar. And bourbon. Nice bourbon, right? Okay, today we're going to be using Buffalo Trace. Already in our glass, we've got our Luxardo cherries, our orange, and our cane sugar. The reason why we did it a little bit early, we kind of like it to, the sugar to marinate, open up a little bit, kind of create a paste, okay? What makes it a smoked old fashioned is here we, we smoke our glasses while we're making the cocktail, okay? To smoke the old fashioned, do we want you to go ahead and start muddling that drink? You got all the hard, all the hard work this round. Okay. To, it's what she does best. That's right, right? She's the heavy, she's the heavy <laughs> work on just a, a pretty face, right? To make the smoke go, the smoke flashes. Oh, to make the smoke flashes, we take some smoke white oak, as you can see, it's a very popular cocktail. We set it on fire. Don't worry, there's a fire marshal on site. And then we okay. take two glasses and we trap the fire in there to make the nice smoke. Again. So, I'm gonna start. Right. And just so everybody knows, we are open for business, so we have some assistance in our background here. Next one. That smoke How on fun. All right. That new on fire, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now yeah. we're using Buffalo Trace bourbon. That's just kind of a standard, very, very popular, very smooth bourbon. If you like a little bit of a smokier one, maybe use something like, let's just say, Knob Creek, Woodford Reserve. If you want something a little bit sweeter, maybe like a nice bullet rye or Jack Daniels, something like that, right? But we're going to be using Buffalo Trace. I'm going to be okay. using two ounces of two buffalo, ounces. buffalo Trace. If someone's having a bad night, how much? Uh, I give them four, four ounces. ounces. That's right? called the new <laughs> Lepore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll do two ounces because you guys are having a great time, right? Beautiful. Like that. So you, still, you can see the smoke is still trapped in here. That's what's giving, it's going to give it that smoky aroma, okay? Now Nula's going to stir the cocktail. Some people shake their old fashioned. When I do that, it, uh, yeah, it upsets the bartender when you, when you shake it old fashioned. The reason why you want to stir it is you, get, you shake a cocktail, it bruises it. What bruising means is basically you're shaking it so much that you've crushed up the ice and created these little ice crystals that basically water down your drink. So you're doing this, you're not bruising it at all. Okay, you ready? Ready. Cocktail's ready. Get your strainers ready. This has to be done very quickly. All right, ready? Done. Good. All right. One. Two. Perfect. Now four. Cheers. Cheers. Long, Jeff. All right. Beautiful. All right. We top it off with a little bit of black walnut bitters, Nula. Yes. Do the honors. Perfect. Nice cherry and orange garnish. Perfect. Very right. nice. Ooh, good. All right, so why don't you ladies go ahead and take a nice big smell. <laughs> uh, uh, smell. I hope you guys are having as much as fun as we are right now. This is really pretty. I can definitely smell the smoke. Oh, you can. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I really was going to save this one for Chef, uh, thinking this was kind of a manly drink, um, but let me tell you, it's for delicious. The it's really delicious. <laughs> thank you, Cody. You're thank welcome. you, Noah. Thank, thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for joining us and talking about our amazing food truck. I actually want to invite everybody or introduce Nadine here, who's our director of fitness. She's going to tell you kind of what we have going on over at the court. The core consists of our tennis courts, our practice golf range, um, all of our fitness studio, the spa. It's separate from our main clubhouse here. So she's going to kind of take it away and tell you a little bit about what's going on there. Okay, first I'm going to talk about the spa. Um, before the, the pandemic, um, Betty Freitag, our spa manager, kept the spa in immaculate condition. And now with the pandemic, she is doing extremely 
great job keeping it nice and safe for our members. She only offers at this present time basic manis and pedis, um, basic facials and basic massages. When our members have an appointment, they come up to the, um, to the spa and they call from outside into the spa. Then when their appointment is available, the front desk will contact them and they will go directly to their service. So if they're going to the salon, the nail salon, they go directly to the nail salon. If they're going to a treatment room, they go directly into the treatment room. Now, if you're having a manicure, Betty has placed the, um, she has some plexi wall in between the nail tech and our members to keep them safe. She has a curtain between the pedicure chairs to keep those members safe as well. Um, the members, if they're having a facial or a massage, they go directly into the treatment room. There is no locker service at this time, and there's no lounging in our lounge. Um, we also have a resort style pool and we are practicing safe distance out at the poolside, so it's six feet. And they do permit lap swimming, but prior to the pandemic, you were able to share a lap lane. At this point, you can only do single lap swim. Then um, in our tennis department, um, for social distancing, what we're doing is only permitting four people on a court at a time. Those four people, when they have their um, court time completed, they must vacate, and when they vacate, then the next set can come in. They must make an appointment in order to schedule a tennis um, court time. Um, they do still, in the tennis department, provide um, um, open tennis. They have um, round robins. They have intra-club play, and they also have social mixers. They, the tennis pros still offer private and group sessions. And if you want to get your, your rackets restrung, you can still get that done. You can drop it off at the, the tennis pro shop. You can also um, peruse the pro shop and still order some items into the, in the pro shop in person, or you can order it in advance and the, um, you can come and pick up the item that you want. Really great service. Um, on the tennis courts, they do not permit towels, so you must bring your own towels. They do not provide that service. Um, the hydration stations do not have cups, so that touch point is gone. You can bring, members can bring their own cups and use the hydration station um, that way. Um, there is pickleball. Um, right now, there is pickleball by appointment, but starting next week, they're going to change it up a little bit and they're only gonna offer a round robin on Wednesdays. Um, then we have our fitness center, which is my baby. And yes, I love the fitness center. I've been at IBIS for 20 years and um, love fitness. Um, we, at the same time, we do not commit towel service and the locker rooms are not available other than for restroom purposes. Um, we offer 26 Zoom fitness classes per week. Um, we do not have any classes going in the pool this time. We have no in-person classes. Um, we do have our, our members um, can enjoy YouTube um, videos by our very own fitness instructors. So um, Christy, our wonderful videographer, has taken videos of our instructors and we, are, we have those available. So sometimes some of our members if they want to do a spin class, they can go right into the spin studio, pull up on our wellness app, pull up a class, and they can do it with our own instructor on the app. It's a really cool new setup that we have. Then um, uh, upstairs, we have we, we actually ask members, they have to wear their masks to come into the fitness center, you need to come into the tennis and fitness center building. Um, when we ask that, that they wash their hands for two minutes, and um, uh, we, again, no towel service, um, but we do have corral throughout the entire fitness facility. We have what's called spa side, which is a disinfectant that um, members can spray that. Um, it actually kills COVID. You can spray it right on the gym wipes. So we ask the members to use the wipes before um, they get into a piece of equipment and after. 
they get off the field. So what we're basically stating to you is we are taking all safety precautions here for our employees, especially for our members as well. Um, so I think we're doing such a great job on, on really being as cautious as we can for everybody's safety. You want to join me for a drink? Mm -hmm. I certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding me? All right. Right. So we are going to be making a sangria today. What kind of sangria are you making? I'm making a red. And I'm making a white sangria. What kind of sangria do you ladies like? Oh shoot, I've never had a sangria, so I don't know. Gonna yeah. I'm going to let Nula choose for me. <laughs> oh, no, it's me. Okay. You get the red sangria. Nula makes a great red sangria. Okay. I drink anything wine. Anything wine. Maybe we'll give you both. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with the red sangria, you'll notice Nula's using lemons, limes, and oranges. With the red sangria, you try to make it a little more sour because you with the red wine, the sour kind of complements the red wine. Uh -huh. With the white sangria, you'll see that I'm using some berries and some orange as well because with the white sangria, you usually want it a little bit sweeter. Okay, something you drink in the middle of the day. Normally, with the sangria, you're supposed to marinate the fruit overnight, but sometimes you don't plan ahead. So what we're doing, we're making express sangria. You notice we're muddling the fruit, but not too hard. Okay, if you muddle it too hard, you're going to end up with a slushy, and nobody wants that, right? Right. Just smoothie, okay. So once you've got your ice, or excuse me, your fruit muddled, you're going to add the ice. Right. Okay. Okay. Ice. All right. And then you're going to add six ounces of your wine. Okay, six ounces is a good number. There's no, what's very important is there's really no wrong way to make a sangria. We have some members here, they like their sangria, we're going to give it a quick shake to kind of spread out the fruit. Don't bruise it. Don't bruise it. <laughs> there's no real wrong way to make a sangria. We have some members here, what are they like? They're like apples, apples pears. pears. Oh, it's like they like a fruit cocktail. A fruit cocktail, basically. I like to think that they're, they're living a healthy lifestyle like that. But it's um. Are you a white or red? Ooh. I eat. I'm, I'm given a red. red. Okay, there you go. And you'll get the white. Uh, yeah. But there's really no wrong way. We have some people they can they like to add ginger ale to it, at club soda. They like to make it with the rosé. We just we just kind of use Pinot Noir and Sauvignon Blanc because that's just too standard. It's a standard red and a standard white. But like I said, we have some people that make the same thing with champagne. There's there's really no wrong way to make it. It's just kind of your preference. But again, this is just kind of a standard ingredient. Okay, do you want to switch with me, Carla? Uh, are you a white? I, I, I do either or. I do either or as well. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Enjoy, ladies. Are you guys drinking with us? I know I can't see, so just making sure. Is everybody drinking with us? Oh, this is delicious. Thank you both. Thank you. Both. Thank you. Cheers again, Nathan. Cheers Thank again. you for coming over and talking about what we're doing over at the fitness. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful Fourth of July. My goal is to get through this whole thing. Yeah. 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 Michael, come on back. Nadine, always nice to see you. Nice to see you, Michael. All right. How's the drink going? Good? It is very refreshing, actually. No, I think we were supposed to do one more. I hope we're fine for it. Nula wanted to do something special for you because it kind of came from home. I don't know how much time we're looking at. Um, we have one more very quick brief demonstration, if that's okay, from, from her heart. Is everybody good with that? Okay, Nula, you're on. Okay. I'm going to make an Irish coffee. Irish coffee. With, with a, a Irish whiskey from Tullamore, that for the county where I come from, where I was born and raised. So I'm going to make a nice Irish coffee for all of you. Yeah, you too. I was going to drive home. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, there's always thing called Uber. Uber. <laughs> what Nua's putting in here right now is cane sugar, 
Again, this is the traditional Irish way to make it, right? Right. So we use brown sugar, regular sugar, stevia. And now I'm pouring in. I'm pouring in the coffee. Coffee. And it's just regular coffee, or regular American coffee. We stir that up. Oops. So what happens if you go to Tullamore and someone tries to make this with Jameson? Uh, they wouldn't be very happy with it. No. <laughs> they kick no, them out. Absolutely. Right? And definitely not Bushnells. No, no. not Bushnells. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know anything about Bushnells. Well, Bushnells comes from Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. So. What's that that you're adding in there now? That's a little bit of whip, house made whipped cream. Okay. We like to add the whiskey at the very end because it kind of floats on top of the whipped cream and slowly settles into the, the coffee. I think I heard Nula earlier that you have a friend that knows you on here from 20 years ago or worked with you. Am I correct? No, no, no. Someone worked with you 20 years ago? Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah so, many people, so many people has worked with me 20 years. The only one I can recall really is Bridget. Bridget? Bridget. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Bridget originally worked here from day one. She she worked on the on the what do you call it the um, truck that was over by the pool area. And that's that's the longest member I think that's been here. Mm. With me. Okay. Yeah, Her name is Claudia. 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 Claudia worked with you. Claudia, how long ago? No, we wish we twenty seven years ago. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, I've been here just mm -hmm. 20 years. Very so this is, this, this is your Irish whiskey. Your authentic I Irish your, coffee. I bought your Tullamore Dew. My, my town in Ireland. Thank you so much, Nula. Thank you, Nula. Thank you, Cody. We want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, hopefully you enjoyed seeing the new Alto, hearing a little bit about what we're trying to do here at IBIS. Enjoy our happy hour. Yes. And, uh, and everybody ahead. stay safe. Thank you for joining us. We definitely appreciate it. We can't wait to see everybody back here at the call. Absolutely. I always like to, to end something with the fact that, like, you know, the last stop sign coming into the club here at Ibis says stop and smell the roses. And um, Ibis is a place that everybody wants to come home to. So Absolutely. cheers, you guys. Cheers. Thank cheers. you so much for cheers. joining us this evening. Have a great night, everybody. Can can we ask, um, the pineapple infused, can you do that with tequila? You can. Absolutely. Yeah. We use pineapple because pineapple takes, it, it, it holds for up to 14 days. You can also make it with other fruits. We've tried it with mm -hmm. guava, mango. Yeah. Um, we tried it with just about every alcohol. Pear. That you, pear. We've done it yeah. with pear before. But you got to keep an eye on those fruits. They yeah. don't last as long yeah. in the container. But yeah, we've done it with tequila. We've done it with gin once. And yeah. And yeah. that's pretty much everything. We really want to do it with whiskey. Yeah. But yeah, we've done it with tequila. It was really good. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get creative and do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Come over. Thank you, guys. You guys have a great Fourth of July weekend and be safe. Stay Thank safe. Thank you. You do the same. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.